Yes, I love John Macefield. But this is one of the earliest ones. And what I love about this is the, it's three verses. It's called cargoes, i.e. the stuff that ships carry on them in the days when there were no aeroplanes to take stuff around the world. And he captures completely three different kinds of ships with three different kinds of cargoes. Listen especially to the last verse, yeah. because what I love is that when he comes to the, the British, the little, um, the little kind of dirty ship in the channel, everything is staccato, chop, chop, chop words. So while the first two verses are languid and luscious from sort of Central Asia and Palestine and places, the last one is chop, chop, chop. Brilliant. He's a brilliant man. So it's called Cargoes. Quinquereem, incidentally, quinquereem means five ranks of oars. So you can imagine five rows of galleys of slaves tsh, dipping and pulling. Quinquereem of Nineveh from distant Ophir, rowing home to Haven in sunny Palestine with a cargo of ivory and apes and peacocks, sandalwood, cedarwood and sweet white wine. Stately Spanish galleon coming from the isthmus, dipping through the tropics by the palm green shores with a cargo of diamonds, emeralds, amethysts, topazes and cinnamon and gold moidores. Dirty British coaster with a salt caked smokestack butting through the channel in the mad March days with a cargo of tyne coal, road rail, pig lead, firewood, ironware, and cheap tin trays. <laughs> Great. Great. You're right. All that lovely alliteration yes. in the first two verses, very sensuous, and yes. then suddenly you're brought up completely to a halt. Ugly, messy. Mm. Very good. Dirty British coaster with a salt cake smokestack. Pardon? It's a poem. The ship reminded me of it. She's not British, she's Liberian. Oh, sailing under a flag of convenience. It's appropriate. She smells like a convenience. Butting through the channel in the mad March days. Another poem? Same one. Do you remember recitation at school with Miss Hindmarsh? I can't stand poetry. 